packages everything into a response body. Now, now is the time we talk about the response body. So it packages everything into a response body and it sends it back towards the cloud. Now, the response body travels all the way through the cloud or through the internet and it reaches the client's browser or your browser if you're using Internet Explorer, if you're using a Chrome, I'll be showing you all, all of those. If you're using a Chrome, you'll be receiving that page uh, that that we all know, uh, that the home page for perhaps uh, for Google.com. So that's how a web application is functioning. Now let's look at it into more detail. So I've actually uh, told you everything. Now this uh, the the modern apps they have something called a dynamic interaction. Back in the days when uh, when web development was first introduced and when HTML was first introduced, our pages used to be uh, all static. Static in the sense like you write a document, you write a web document. You might have used word, uh, a word processor program like uh, Microsoft Office uh, Word document. Uh, so in those Word document, you just if you want to write a paragraph, you just go on and open up the document, Word document, and you write whatever you want. Now, in in those early days, early days, so uh, what what the web developers used to do they used to write plain HTML, um, plain HTML web pages. So those web pages actually, I mean, they did not have any sort of logic. They did not have any sort of programming. They did not have any sort of database interactions. So, in that sense, they used to uh, manually um, they used to manually edit everything by their own hand. It's not that the program is doing everything for you. It's it's the programmer. I mean, it's the developer who's doing everything uh, behind the scenes. So, what we talked about is uh, is that how the client the web browser and the server operates behind the scenes uh, through the cloud now we need to look at what a static interaction is perhaps it's very simple the only difference is that you might even see something called index.html so this is a web page so you're looking when you uh, open up when you request for a website when you request for the for the web app using the website's address like google.com it's actually retrieving something of an HTML page so the starting page is known as the index page or in other cases it's also called the web page but in computers terminology it's actually known as index uh, an index page and uh, because I don't have a space so I can write the entire thing in one line sorry for that but it's going to have something like .html extension so this extension is telling the service this is going to be a static page now the static page means um, it's it's not going to have any sort of programming logic HTML is a language it means hypertext markup language it's used to create the layout of the web page every website needs to create a layout of their web pages using HTML so this is a mandatory thing and we need we obviously need to have CSS styling to make it more beautiful but nonetheless to create the skeleton or the layout of uh, of the web page we will obviously need to have HTML uh, we need obvious we obviously need to use the HTML language so everyone is actually using HTML uh, even Google so HTML is used to create the layout just remember that the page that you receive the home page that you receive after you type in google.com is actually a, is also it's also a page that's been designed its layout has been designed with the HTML markup language so it's just the same thing the client when you type in google.com 
on your web browser it's actually sending an HTTP request for that page for that page that you see on your browser so so if you have requested for google.com it's going to retrieve that page so it's going to send an HTTP it's known as, the full abbreviation is known as hypertext transfer protocol and there is another uh, there's another secure layer that 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 is using SSL it's known as HTTPS so you don't really need to know all about them right now you, you only need to know that when we send a request it's known as the HTTP request so the request is actually like a um, package as I've already told you it consists of the address that you are writing like if you're if you want to if you want to go to Google's page you write the address of Google which is google.com then behind the scenes the web browser is adding your address along with a body a request body so this transfer protocol this is like a channel it's creating a channel through the internet through the cloud so this protocol this transfer protocol just think of this transfer protocol to be a channel just think of this uh, arrows to be like a tunnel or a channel yeah so it's sending that request through the channel to Google's server Google is then retrieving the page that index.html so when you see a page that has um, that has a name the the format is something like it needs to have a name dot the extension so the extension will tell you what sort of language is it using so whenever you see a page with dot html or dot htm then you're going to understand that it's uh, it's a page that is written in html markup language so nonetheless let's get back to where we were so Google will then retrieve its index.html page so this index.html page is the Google's web page that we usually see when we request uh, Google's page for the first time so Google is going to retrieve that then uh, perhaps it's going to create another package now the package will have the response body so the response body will consist of this page then it's going to have the address it's going to have its uh, own address along with the uh, client's address so it's going to send that through the HTTP tunnel or the HTTP channel so when the response is sent through, through the tunnel or the channel the client or the web browser on which you're sitting is going to read is going to unpackage what the server has sent so it sees that uh, it's going to first re uh, read uh, the address from where it is receiving the response so it sees that it is receiving the response from Google server then it, it's going to re uh, read the response body so in the response body it finds that it has received the index.html page which is the home page for Google so when it receives the page it's then going to load that page on your web browser so that you can use it so this is the basic static interaction that's occurring behind the scene for uh, for an HTML document now let's get uh, now let's move on to something called the dynamic interactions now this is the actual scenario that usually occurs nowadays we have we need every website is using some sort of database engine and it's also using some sort of scripting language on its server to uh, respond to clients requests now if you consider the uh, previous photo if we look at it um, if we look at yeah so in a static interaction we did not have any sort of programming logic it was just the layout it was just the um, uh, it was just the you know the skeleton of the web page along with the uh, styling styling means um, 
you just the beautification CSS is used for beautifying your web pages and HTML is used to create the skeleton of your web page now what we um, what we understand by scripting languages is that they are used to provide logic to, to uh, create decision makings suppose uh, if you talk about decision making then your script is going to uh, provide several parts suppose let's take the example for uh, a form you might have encountered several forms like if you open if you want to uh, register inside a website suppose you want to register for an account with PayPal so PayPal is going to provide you with an online account or if you want to open up a new email address with Gmail uh, Google is going to uh, Google Google will ask you to fill out their online form and on that form you're going to find separate uh, spaces for writing your first name, your last name, then your password, and all those information. So, suppose Google wants you to write uh, your first name in capital letters, in all capital letters, but you forget that and you write your um, your first name in lowercase or uh, lowercase letters. Your your that first name is in lowercase but Google is telling you to write in uppercase form so what that logic or what that script is going to do it's going to provide the logic that if the user has uh, written in uppercase or if the user has written the first name in capital letters then succeed but if the user has failed or if the user has written something else other than using capital letters then ask the user to rewrite the first name so this is something called a logic insight and that we uh, that we use in programming so a database engine is where we store data permanently it's a permanent engine or it's a permanent uh, storage space where like your passwords, your first name, your last names are being stored when you apply for a new email address with Google or Gmail. So that's what it's doing.